A fossil hey from CFA. What's up, guys? Ashby Gale here, owner of Charleston Fossil Adventures and photographer and co author of A Beachcomber's Guide to Fossils. Today, I'm fossil hunting in a parking lot. Nah, just kidding. I am outside the dollar store because I want to go in there and see what is the best fossil hunting kit I can assemble in the dollar store for as little money as possible. Let's go see what we can find. To be honest, I did not expect to walk out of the dollar store with three full bags of fossil hunting equipment. Let's sort it out into categories and see all of the crazy stuff that you can get at the dollar store to help you with your next fossil hunt. items is that they are going to be up for sale as an entire bundle on my website the same day this video premieres. Right now you can go on the website and check it out. Now Ashby you're saying why would I go on your website and buy a bunch of dollar store items that I could go to my dollar store and get. Now the funds of that sale are going to help support an intern at the Mace Brown Museum of Natural History for 30 hours of museum prep work. So this intern is going to be in the lab, scraping away at dirt off of fossils, gluing bones together, and all manner of items that go on in a prep lab. Even though these are cheap dollar store items that are up for sale, they are going to go help fund scientific research being done in Charleston at this very minute. Oh, and I should probably mention that whoever gets this product is also going to receive this lovely Angustodon's tooth between 24 and 30 million years old. Awesome! Up first, let's take a look at some materials that you can use in the field. So right off the bat, we already have a fairly full fossil hunting kit. On my kayak trips, I love using knee pads. It really does save your knees when you're kneeling down on some gravel. Of course, you want a backpack that you can carry everything in. This one might not be waterproof, but there's two different compartments here to hold larger and smaller items. So that's a pretty good score. Not bad for a dollar, better than a drawstring pouch. It's also handy to have a hand towel this one was pretty good. It has a two-pack there, so you could keep one out there in the field with you and then one back at home to help dry off the fossils. Now, it'll be good to keep a flashlight handy in case you're out hunting past dark. Now, I don't advise hunting at night. That usually implies that you are up to no good and not supposed to be there, but uh, Keeping a flashlight handy is good just in case you are out uh, until sunset. I like this one, it actually has two different LED lights. Maybe not in South Carolina, but in other states you can sift around in the rivers. So having a colander like that in the backpack in the car would be handy. Also if you don't have room for a colander, one of these strainers would also be a good bet. I personally like using the strainer at the end of the hunt to wash all of the sand off of my fossils. And sometimes I will use a smaller one if it's just some small little micro fossils. If you're at a site that, let's say it isn't a beach, maybe it has some rockier fossils, then work gloves, safety goggles, and a very tiny crowbar might be handy. You can chisel through some rocks with that, maybe use that to claw through larger loose rocks and boulders to look, flip them over, look for other fossils underneath them. They were fresh out of hammers. There were no tiny little hammers at the Dollar Tree I went to. It'll just have to be the crowbar on this one. If you do have a hammer and you're using the crowbar, please make sure you wear eye protection. That's very important whenever I'm at a quarry we always have some eye protection handy. I always keep with me a small container to put some of the more fragile or more delicate fossils in. This little snapping lid container is perfect for that. 
The other thing that I do is I like to layer foam in these so that you can put those fragile fossils on a nice cushioned surface so that they don't break by the time you get home. They're rattling around in the case. What I'm going to do for the person that gets this package, I'm putting in two layers of fiber fill for you so that you can have a case identical to mine that I take out with me. Ah, that's so satisfying. Next, you definitely want to take some pens and a notebook, preferably a right in the rain notebook where the water doesn't ruin the paper pages. It's very important to keep detailed notes of where you collect and where your fossils are coming from, uh, the date, who you're with, and anything else memorable about that trip to help jog your memory when you're looking at the fossils. I thought these aluminum knitting needles were kind of cool. They've got these points on them that would be pretty handy for uh, digging through some soft sediment maybe prying something gently out of a clay, uh, and there's a nice little two-pack there. You could also use these, thinking now for myself, as a marker if you found something and had to go get your camera equipment to make sure you didn't lose where that tooth was. So maybe I'll go back to Dollar Tree and get a pair of these for myself. Depending on the site you're at, you might need to jacket some fossils. It's always good to keep a roll of duct tape and some aluminum foil because if you find a fossil that is in a loose sediment and you want to wrap it up and protect it, doing that with aluminum foil and duct tape at the bare minimum is a very good thing to do. Now if you happen to have some plaster and you know how to make a plaster jacket, that's another good thing to do. and should be a video that I make in the future. Note to self. Now let's say you're fresh out of duct tape and you need something to hold that together. How about 115 yards of floss? You could wrap that specimen up with tin foil and then wind a bunch of floss around it. And it's also just good to have spare cordage or rope making material in a backpack. And floss takes up barely any room. The last item you should take in the field, of course, is food and water. So I'm going to throw in a bag of trail mix as well. Our next category is first aid. It's very important to keep a small, basic first aid kit with you at all times. In mine, I always keep some ibuprofen, hand sanitizer, a bandage of some sort. So let's say you twist your ankle going down the mountain if there's a lot of loose rocks. Having a bandage is a really good thing to have. And then, of course, some band-aids. And at the end of a hunt, it's very nice to have some wipes to clean off your hands. Resealable travel size packs like this, great thing to bring along. So now you're back, you're ready to clean up your fossils and give them a closer look. Uh, maybe some of them are still embedded in rock. It's always good to leave a little bit of rock attached to the fossil so that you know and other scientists know where it came from, but sometimes we do want to clean a little more off to expose it. We've got a little pack of small screwdrivers right here that would be good for scraping through loose sediment. The same can be said about this cake spatula, a pretty nice little tool for softer sediment. Toothbrushes. I went with the kids toothbrush pack because it gave you three for the price of one. And look, it's perfect for little hands. If you are consolidating your fossil or adding something that binds all of the dirt together, like Vinac or Butvar, Paleo Bond, keeping some paintbrushes around, another good thing to do. Then if you want to apply that consolidant without brushing it on, maybe cotton swabs would do the trick. Our next category is storage and organization. So trays with dividers, excellent thing to keep different types of fossils sorted. 
I know many of my clients have actually used these dollar store trays before to keep their fossils sorted. Another little activity tray right here. This could also be good in the prep lab for having a fossil that you're still gluing together. You could keep all the pieces organized and the dirt contained. Desk organizers like these are great for keeping your fossils in. I always like ones that have different size compartments. You've got three small, one medium, and one large. You can truly never have enough organizers. These little pill organizers and crafting boxes are great for keeping fossils. This one has lots of different little boxes in there. I picked up some of these paper cups. They're good for a temporary storage of smaller fossils, maybe ones that you need to categorize. Then lastly, these scissors and the index cards. A fossil without a label is essentially a paperweight. It does not matter where it comes from because no one knows, and so suddenly it becomes useless. Keeping good records with your note cards, making smaller labels from them with your scissors there, definitely something that you need to do in your collection. And the final category, perhaps my favorite, are fossil displays. I think these are probably the two most exciting things I found at the dollar store, which I know sounds ridiculous. This little organizer right here was pretty cool. You've got nine boxes. Excuse the carrots and rabbits. This is pretty decently constructed. I think if you put a fresh coat of paint on it, it would look really nice with some fossils in there. And then this one is definitely the coolest that I found. This is a wooden picture frame and it has this little insert here. You could put a photo from your favorite fossil site, a photo of you and your family fossil hunting, a photo of your favorite fossil, and then it has a magnetic closure that allows it to open up and there's all of this storage room on the inside. A very cool find. Again, you could paint it. I am a big fan of displays and containers like this. Hold on, there's something else in here. Let's check it out. Huh. I subscribe to CFA on YouTube. I hope you do too. Thanks for watching guys. Happy hunting, collect responsibly, and we'll see you next time. Lastly, a huge thank you and shout out to George over at the Dollar Tree for allowing me to film collecting all of these products. I really enjoyed searching through the store for all of these fossil hunting implements because you never know what you might need.